let's discuss question number two the wild bactrian camel camelus ferus lives only in the desert regions of mongolia and northern china figure 1.1 shows a wild bactrian camel right so in the figure 1.1 we can see the wild bactrian camel part a the wild bactrian camel is at risk of extinction in the wild and is categorized as critically endangered by the international union for conservation of nature iucn there are only 950 wild bactrian camels left in their natural habitat suggest reasons why the wild bactrian camel has become critically endangered so guys uh, how do we define uh, endangered species a species is said to be endangered when it is threatened to extinction that means that the population of uh, that species has significantly reduced and it's reduced to an extent that reproduction is affected and because reproduction is affected the population will further decrease and um, we really need to conserve that species and protect it from extinction so what could be the reasons for a uh, wild bactrian camel to become critically endangered the reason could be hunting or poaching by humans or it could be due to habitat loss or it could be due to a uh, lack of food or it could be uh, due to um, disease uh, that it acquired from other uh, desert animals right so there could be uh, various reasons and let's write few reasons over here number 1 it could be due to habitat loss it could be due to hunting and poaching by humans as a sport or for food right and it could be due to disease acquired from other animals it could be due to lack of food or competition for food lack of food competition for food with other species maybe competition competition for food with other species or other animals right outline, outline the role of iucn so guys what is iucn iucn is the international union for conservation of nature and what you need to know about iucn is that it's a global or international authority which gives advice to the governments of different countries and to the people to protect and conserve nature many scientists are working for iucn and uh, these scientists are carrying out research and analysis on to which species will become extinct in the future or which species are endangered right so we can simply say that scientists in the iucn are working to assess the conservation status of many different species and conservation status is basically defined as that which species will be going to extinct in the future and which species are endangered so on the basis of this research and analysis the iucn uploads a red list of threatened species online and you can assess uh, that page on the internet and you can see all the uh, endangered species in that red list right that red list helps uh, the the governments and the people to recognize that to identify which species are endangered and then policies are made accordingly also uh, iucn is involved in the education and awareness regarding the threatened species all right so what points do we need to write when we have to write the role of 
um, the IUCN simply uh, you will write that IUCN is a global authority which gives advice to the governments of different countries and people and people to protect or conserve nature right and we can simply say that IUCN assesses conservation status it assesses conservation status of species and uploads a red list a red list of threatened species or we can say endangered species and what else it does is that it um, influences the governments it influences the governments and policies made by the governments it influences the government and policies it influences the policies made by the government right policies made by the government right we can also say that uh, what it does is that it is involved it is IUCN is involved in IUCN is involved in education and awareness so it gives awareness to the people about the species which are threatened. Some zoos use assisted reproduction techniques such as embryo transfer in their captive breeding programs for endangered species. Embryo transfer has resulted in domesticated dromedary camels giving birth to wild bacterian camel calves. Describe the procedure of describe the procedure of embryo transfer describe the procedure of embryo transfer in mammals such as the camel so guys as you all know that uh, there are captive breeding programs in which uh, the organisms of a particular species are captured they're placed in the cages of captivity and then they're allowed to breed and uh, if they are not able to breed then assisted reproduction techniques are used such as the embryo transfer. So how do we define an embryo transfer? We simply, what we do is that we uh, take the embryo and implant it into uh, a mother, which could be uh, the same biological mother or which could be a surrogate mother. So what is the difference between biological mother and surrogate mother? For example, if the ovum from which the embryo is formed comes from uh, the mother in which the embryo uh, has to be implanted. So that mother is known as the biological mother, right? And if uh, ovum is from another mother that is used to make the embryo and the embryo is planted into a separate another mother, right? To which the ovum does not belong, right? So that mother is known as the surrogate mother. So what uh, we do, how do we carry out this procedure? First, we need to uh, make an embryo and we can create an embryo or we can create embryos by IVF. So what we can do is that we can start from writing that first we can super ovulate the female and how do we super ovulate? You can write that inject FSH into the female 
to cause super ovulation so guys what is meant by super ovulation basically uh, you all know that follicle stimulating hormone or fsh what it does it stimulates the growth of follicles in the female ovaries and when you inject fsh into a female what it does it a lot of fsh causes the development of multiple follicles and uh, if multiple multiple follicles develop so uh, multiple uh, ova can develop right normally uh, in a female only uh, in if you talk about the human female only uh, one uh, follicle develops every month and in uh, animals uh, there can be uh, two to three follicles or four to five follicles but when you inject fsh that can result in super ovulation that is the development of multiple follicles and multiple ova then what we can do is that uh, we can um we can uh, remove or we can extract the ova we can extract the ova from the female and mix them with the sperm mix them with the sperm in a petri dish in a in lab in a petri dish in lab and guys this technique is called what in vitro fertilization why do we call it in vitro fertilization in vitro means outside the body that is in lab and fertilization means fusion of sperm and ovum right so when you extract the ova from the female who super ovulated so uh, when you extract the ova you can mix them with the sperm allowing fertilization right allowing fertilization okay this is known as what this technique is known as ivf or in vitro fertilization then we select the embryo why do we select the embryo select healthy or viable embryo right because some embryo that are produced may not be viable so what we can do is that we can select healthy or viable embryo right and we can also store the embryo in embryo banks by freezing for future use so we can also store or freeze embryo embryos in uh, embryo banks right and these can be used in future then what you can do is that you you need to transfer or implant the embryo into the mother into the mother which could be a surrogate mother basically um over here we only need to write about the surrogate mother why 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 is that so that's because if you read the question it says that domesticated it says that domesticated dromedary camels give birth to wild bactrian camel calves so basically um these are some other camels which are giving birth to wild bactrian camels so basically there is surrogacy so transfer or implant the embryo into the surrogate mother right so guys that's it we are done with this question now we will move on to the next question